Good morning, I exhale. Here we are again, another Sunday in the house of the Lord. I am so glad and will be so glad when this is over so we can all connect back together and can have fun again as we are meeting up together. Now, the subject of the lesson for this Sunday will be taken from Galatians 6, chapter 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Jesus taught the disciples and his followers and people of uh, things that they needed to do and uh, being kind to each other, being good to each other. So your movie is going to be talking about Jesus, the disciples, and as they go and teach the people and how many followers Jesus had. But the thing, the strange thing about this is that the religious leaders became upset because Jesus kept on going even when it seemed impossible. And I'm telling you today, keep on going even when it seems impossible. So you ask me, go where? Where can we go? <laughs> There's nowhere we can go. So, but even as you go from one room to the other in your house, knowing that you can tell your brothers and sisters or whoever about the goodness of Jesus and how good he is, because we know that this too will pass. Jesus also strengthened us in times of need. He do this with his Holy Spirit. Once the Holy Spirit is present, he empowers us to keep on going. So we want to definitely keep in mind so whatever we're doing, not to give up, not to be weary, but to keep on going. Because Jesus kept going all the way to the cross. Oh, before I go, are there any newcomers in the house? Raise your hand. All right. So how are you doing, London? How are you doing, Logan? Turn around, DJ. Oh, I'm so glad to see you all. God sees us and remember Keep on going even when it seems impossible. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the books of Matthew, Luke, and Acts. When Jesus returned to life, roller coasters hadn't been invented yet. But as far as his friends were concerned, they might as well have been living on one wild coaster ride. Peter and Matthew might have gone over the whole story one more time as they walked the dusty roads from Galilee back towards Jerusalem. Remember how it started? Jesus does all these miracles, Thousands of people gathered to listen to him. And we hear God's voice saying, this is my son and I love him. But then he gets all those threats from the religious leaders. And he ignores them all and raises Lazarus to life. That lousy Judas betrays him. The religious leaders arrest him. And I run away like a fool. And Jesus is killed. But he comes back to life. And now we get to hang out with him. I think he's got big plans. Did you hear how he told me at the lake to take care of his followers? And what he said to us all on the mountain in Galilee. About making new disciples? Yeah. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Big job. How do you remember all this stuff? I record it. You should write a book sometime. I'm still not so sure about the Holy Spirit part. Same. But Jesus is here with us now. We can do anything while he stays with us. Forever! Ahead, Peter and Matthew and the other disciples could see Jerusalem in the distance, the temple rising above the other buildings. He said to meet him back in Jerusalem. For the Feast of Pentecost, probably. That would be the perfect time for him to do something big. If he wants followers in all nations, that must mean we take over Israel first, right? I don't know about the takeover part. As Jesus' friends returned to Jerusalem, Jesus led them to a hill outside the city near Bethany. Nice view of the city from here. 
I bet he's finally gonna give us all the big plan now. He already did. Make disciples of all nations. Yeah, but how? Is he gonna gather 50,000 people at Pentecost? Or maybe he'll take us all with him on an epic road trip. He probably wouldn't have brought us all up here if he didn't have something big to say. Sure enough, as they ate a meal on the side of the hill, Jesus told them, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit thing again. Peter couldn't take it anymore. He had to ask. Lord, are you gonna give the kingdom back to Israel now? Everyone stopped talking, then looked to Peter, then to Jesus, who shook his head. You should not be concerned about times or dates. The Father has set them by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. The disciples exchanged glances. Okay, you did say the all nations part already, but wh where will you be? And please, can you explain how the Holy Spirit's going to help us? As Jesus smiled at his friends, he lifted his hands and spoke a blessing over them. He's not answering the question. As Jesus was speaking, something incredible happened. Slowly, he began to rise into the air. He's standing in the air. How is he standing in the air? Jesus' friends stared, mouths open. Soon, a cloud hid him from view, but they continued to gape. Men of Galilee. The disciples blinked and finally looked down to discover two tall men dressed in white standing right beside them. Why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. Come back? Come back when? But the man in white were gone. He did say, don't be concerned about times or dates. But he just gave us the biggest job ever. Tell everyone in the whole world about him? There's gotta be a plan. The Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit is the plan. But we don't know what the Holy Spirit is. Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem. So, wait. That's the plan? That's the plan for now. Jesus gave his followers what seemed to be an impossible job. Share the story of Jesus and his love for every nation across the entire world. But soon, he gave them everything they needed to not only start the job, but keep going. Uh, you know the movie was very exciting. It talked to you about Jesus and all the he taught all the people and he had three thousand followers and then as he taught his disciples and about the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit would empower you in time of need and strengthen you. But you must ask for the Holy Spirit too. If you need the Holy Spirit to help you in your waiting, you must ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. Now also, also remember that until the third Sunday, I want you to remember your memory verse, which is taken from Galatians 6, 9. Keep on going, even when it seems impossible. Thank you. I'll see you next couple of weeks. Bye now.